Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a time series plot. If you're interested in following along, I've provided a link to the data so that you don't have to uh, create any yourself. And if you're interested in learning more about R, I post videos every single week on R programming. So we're going to create a time series graph in uh, using the ggplot library. Uh, so let's import all of the libraries that we need. That's the only library that we need. <laughs> so you can see that the ggplot library is included as part of the tidyverse li as part of the tidyverse library. Uh, it's just an amalgamation of all these popular libraries that we can use. So right now, that's the only one we're going to work with. If you have no, if you if you have a data frame and you don't need to do uh, any modifications to it, then you can go ahead and exclusively just import ggplot like this. But uh, we're going to change our data frame a little bit. And so because of that, I'm going to import tidyverse. The next thing we're going to do is import the CSV file that we're working with. And to do that, we're going to use the read.csv function. So I'm going to call my uh, data frame sample data frame sample df. And we're going to use the read csv, read.csv function. In that function, in the brackets here, we're going to point to the location of our data frame. So uh, my, working, my working directory is already set to um, where my data is saved. So all I need to do now is just type out the name of the file. Uh, if you'd like, you can put the full file path. That's no problem. OK, so let's take a quick look at what the data frame looks like. We can use the view library, the view function, to uh, view it. So I have view in the console. The capital V is very important. Uh, so make sure you, you have a capital V in there. And then you can see we have three columns in the sample data frame. We have a column that represents hour. And then we have two columns that represent two different variables. And each column has one entry for each hour. So it's perfect for generating a time series plot. So let's go ahead and try to generate a ggplot using the data frame as it is. So with a ggplot function, you need a couple elements. So this, kind, this page kind of walks you through how to use ggplot, and it provides a lot of excellent examples. Uh, I'm just on the introduction, uh, the getting started tab here, first steps. I'll provide a link to this book in the description box, and it's completely free. So if you take a look at this, every ggplot has the data source. So which data frame are we working with? and aesthetic mappings and we can go we'll go into this in a lot more detail and then you need to walk then you need to specify exactly how to plot the data are we plotting uh, the data as points are we plotting lines what are we doing with the data so we're going to specify all of this and create a very simple plot like this let's go back to r so remember the first thing we need to specify is the data frame so we know that the data frame is sample df the next thing we want to specify is the mapping aesthetic. And we can specify that by typing out AES for aesthetic. And in there, we're going to have some brackets. This is where you specify what the X vari variable will be and what the Y variable will be. So we have an X equals something and then a Y equals something. And we don't actually need quotations. These are just temporary. And then finally, we're going to specify exactly how we want to present the data. So that is going to be using the geom underscore line function because we want to do a time series, right? I want to see a line of how my variable changes across time. So this is the skeleton of what we're working with. And now we're going to specify our x variable. So let's go back to the data frame. Our x variable is going to be the hour column, obviously, because it's a time series. So let's clarify that in our ggplot function. And our y, temporarily, we're going to present, we're only going to plot this city, and then we're going to add that city. So let's do this city in the y variable, this city. OK, so let's see what happens if we were to try to plot this. OK, so let's zoom in a little bit here. This is what you end up with, and this is not helpful to us at all. The reason the data is not being presented properly is because if we take a look at our data frame, 
our temporal variable or our time variable is not a numeric value. Every value begins with an X, so it's not a numeric value. And we can confirm that by using the class function. So we do sample df, and we can check the type of variable that we're working with. So you can see it's a character variable, and we need a numeric variable. So the first thing we're going to do is actually go back and get rid of the x values, and then we're going to try this again. And I'm going to do that directly here. So I'm going to add the pipe, the tidyverse pipe, and what we're going to do is mutate the hour variable to get rid of that x. So what we do is we use mutate, which is obviously the function for changing data in, in the tidyverse library. We're going to change the hour variable. So we're going to mutate the hour. And then if you want to get rid of just the first character of a variable that has a very consistent format, you can use a, the substring, the substring function. So you can see here, replace, extract or replace substrings in a character vector. So we're going to only grab the last three or the last two elements of this column. I only want the last two elements. I don't want the X and I don't need this extra zero. And obviously this will, the, the, the requirements for this will change based on what you're working with. This is just an example. So the variable that we want to change is our, and I only want to grab characters three and characters four. So let's run that again. Let's close this, and we're going to view the data frame once more. So let's check the class of the hour variable again. It's still a character variable, so that tells me that there's one more mutation I need to apply to convert this column into a numeric column. We're going to go back to our, to our function here. And we're going to add one more of these pipes and we're going to mutate the column again to a numeric variable. So if you want to convert a column into a numeric variable, you can do mutate and then the name of the, the column and you use a function called as numeric with the column that you want to change and we can run that. So basically we're saying that this column here should be numeric. It was still a character vector because it had a zero in front of single digit integers. And once you convert that to a numeric column, you'll see that all the zeros are gone. And if we check the class of the column again, it's now numeric. So it should work. The ggplot should work. Let's try this again. And there you go, a time series. Now, we know that we have two columns. We don't want to just present one column. We want to present both. So what we can do is change the, the skeleton of our ggplot so that we make it clear that there's two data sets that we want to present. And the way that we do that is by adding two geomline functions, and each geomline function should specify the data set that we want to present. So what we're going to do is actually remove the y variable from the aesthetic function so that we're only left with x, and we're going to add it to the geomline function. We're going to create another aesthetic function, and in there we're going to specify that y is equal to this city. And we can leave it, we can leave it at that, or we can also add a color. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a color that says whatever color we want. We can set it to red. And then we're going to add a second geomline doing the same thing, but for the other variable. So if we check, once we view sample.df, we can see that that city is the other variable. So let's create a second aesthetic function, y equals that city, and we'll set the color equals to blue. So let's run that. And you can see, we now have a time series. And you can see that we have this city, the first y variable as the uh, y axis title, and we don't want that. So we can manually change the y axis by using y, the ylab function, and that stands for 
the, the label of the y-axis. And we can just set it to um, measurement. It, it can be anything, because these numbers don't actually mean anything. So when you run that, you can see it's, it's measurement now. And that's pretty much it. That's really all it takes to, to generate your own time series. So yeah, give it a shot and good luck.